Next on Relevant Radio, your favorite weekly appointment. It's time for the Nazareth Project. Faith, marriage, and family talk for the everyday Catholic. With your host, Lydia Lococo. Good morning. Welcome to the Nazareth Project Faith, Marriage, and Family Talk for the Everyday Catholic. I'm your host. You know me, Lydia Lococo. I'm here to talk with you on a Friday morning. If you're, uh, you might be listening on Saturday and Sunday because they we have an encore repeats on uh, all over the weekend, but they're all at 9 a.m., so I'm happy you're here. I'm excited to talk to you about um, all things leading into our guests, but I'll keep that a secret until un- until the end of this little chat. I was thinking that life is kind of made up of transitions, and I guess I'm thinking that because I'm transitioning my own life. It's always different stages, isn't it? It's like stages and transitions, and you kind of think you're going to get to some point in your life where that this is life, and those were like stages until you until you realize that life is made up of, I mean, let's be honest with each other, life is made up of a bunch of stages, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just one stage after another, and it's and it transitions one after another. And those transitions bring up questions, though, about our vocation in life. And when I say vocation, we're going to talk, the title of our talk today is Vocation Big V and Little V. People often have questions about discerning vocations. I know the young adults I talk to always say something that goes like this. I can't discern a vocation. What if this is just another phase I'm in? I can't be trusted to make such a big decision until I kind of, you know, become the real me, like outside of any phase. And the answer is, of course, to all this worry is very simple. Like I said, life is one phase after another. The name we give to the navigation of all these phases and stages is, I suppose, discernment. I wonder if, I wonder if the Lord calls it discernment. The Lord just calls it life, right? But we're trying to put some overlay of order, I guess, on it, make it linear. Life isn't like that. It's a real temptation. It's a temptation for me. I wonder if it's a temptation for you to spend your life, your head time, in the past or in the future. Like, I'm either looking forward way ahead to what I'm going to be doing or the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, what's the next thing? Or in the past, dwelling, brooding, digging. Um. That's a temptation, and that is not a good thing. If you have a spiritual director, they're going to tell you, you meet Jesus in the moment today, right now. That's all we have control over. So that your spiritual director will tell you that. Uh, you know, you can go to an AA meeting, they'll tell you that, right? Any Anybody who wants to help you get healthy is going to say, you live in the moment today. That's where you meet Jesus. That That's where you meet other people. Everything and all we have is the here and the now. We only have today to be Jesus for others And we only have today to serve him by serving others. We only have today to say yes. So I talked about the big V and the little V. When we hear the word vocation, most people immediately think of marriage or the priesthood or the vowed religious life. But a vocation is more than a marital status. That might be what we mean by vocation big V. But life and our vocations are accumulations of skills and experiences and relationships that incline us toward a particular path in life. Our day-to-day vocation is both a gift and a response to a call from God. It includes how we choose to spend our time, our limited resources, right, time, how we choose the people we enjoy, and how we choose our response to the experiences and opportunities that God places in our path. You know, we're called to act, not react, not float along the surface of life. All that we have and all that we are is a gift from God. Our vocation then is a free response to God in love. So in reality, we can have a vocation to the married life, but we still need to develop an inner voice that comes to us over the years after many experiences. It helps to steer that what that which we mean by, in, in any other word, we would say is a vocation. Little v. Many people really develop an inner ear, which allows them to listen to God's call. And it's only in the silence of our hearts and growing in a life of grace that we can really become adept at recognizing these new avenues, these new vocations, small v, that the Lord presents to us. Looking back at your own life, was there a particular moment that confirmed that you were on the right path? It could have been a promotion, a profound moment of prayer an engagement, an affirmation from a complete stranger. You thought you knew who you were. You thought that when you decided to pursue a particular path in life, 
that you knew how it was all going to play out. But you discovered that your vocation is more than deciding what to do in your life. It's a way of being in the world. Every decision is an opportunity to say a deeper yes to the God's invitation. Finding your vocation in life makes you answer questions like, who am I? Where am I going? Who's going with me? And how will I make a difference in the world? Our guest today is someone who exemplifies keeping that inner ear open. Repeatedly, she has said yes to God and in numerous ways has been led down paths that I'm sure she would have never dreamed of. She seems to continually do the hard work of remaining aware, and she cultivates a self-awareness that helps her see the Lord's hand in her life. We're going to take a quick break now, and when we come back, I want you to listen in on our studio chat with Margie Manfred. You're listening to The Nazareth Project on Relevant Radio. We'll be right back. In today's car buying marketplace, the difference is the people inside the dealership. Uptown Motors sets the bar in customer service. Here's Uptown Motors third generation operator, John Pintler. John, tell us about Uptown. Well, the cool thing about Uptown is we've served Milwaukee and the Wauwatosa community for 67 years at this point. And we're a firm believer that business and customers can get along and do things in a mutual way here. And what's good for our customers is good for our dealership. And what we really thrive on is having people come back time and time again. A lot of our customers are people I've grown up around. I started out as a lot attendant. I was washing people's cars. I would drive them home when they were here for service. You know, then I started selling cars and got to work with these people. And now I'm in a position where I get to help structure deals where we find the way to make the payments and the car all come together. And these people really become family. Buy a new or used car from Uptown and they'll donate $200 to the parish of your choice. This is not a gimmick. It's who they are. Stop in and see what customer service is all about. Uptown Motors, Catholic owned, Catholic proud. RelevantRadio.com, keyword Uptown. We're back with the Nazareth Project on Relevant Radio. Here's your host, Lydia Lococo. Welcome back to the Nazareth Project. I'm so happy that you're here. In our studio today with us is a very special person, special to my heart. She wandered in, I don't know from where, the Holy Spirit sent her, truly, she's nodding. I, this was a true story. And I just found her, well, I don't know, by the side of the road one day. And she has really come to have a real presence in the Archdiocese. We're gonna talk with Margie Manley, founder and principal of Jim Communications and Consulting. And we're going to talk to her about all kinds of things. Welcome, Margie. Thank you, Lydia. It's so great to be here. It's great to it's great to have you here in an official capacity and not just me whining in my office and you trying to take all my words and, and put them into something that people can understand. Now, recently, you came to the Archdiocese and to kind of work with the Archdiocese in a professional capacity in the area of communications. And I think a lot of our listeners don't understand what communications is share with us what you do. Sure. So the, so I was asked to be part of the very honored to be part of the Synod Preparatory Commission, which was all the work of 20 months preparing for the actual Synod event, which took place on Pentecost weekend this past June. And during this preparatory time, there's a lot of communications needed um, to the parishes. We are 600,000 faithful in our archdiocese. We have more than 200 plus, 240, I believe, parishes across the archdiocese. So how are we going to, as a church, communicate what is the synod? What is the archbishop's hope for the synod? What will be the outcome? What is the process for um, leading up to the synod? So communications is really about communicating the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. Why are we doing all of this? I I feel overwhelmed already. (laughs) I feel like it's hurting cats trying to, you know, I mean, I've just learned in my little small office how much work it is. You have to brand it and you have to logo it and then you have to tweet it nowadays and you have to get it out on Facebook. But it's not about that. It's how you write it in a way that people can understand. And I can't use all those theological terms that I studied in school. So I have to give it to people like you and you can put it into words that they that they get. You bet. You know, we're such a multi-sensory consumer, consumerized. Yeah. um, Audience nowadays, for example, the the pastoral letter that Archbishop Lestecki issued, which this this is where it all began. Um, many people read that. It was a beautiful, beautiful theological writing on ecclesiology. 
But one of the things that we as a communications group and team thought about was how can we convey, for example, the pastoral letter in a way that people will consume it? Some people like to read, some people like other sensories like media or video or internet. So we actually turned that pastoral letter into a a video called The Beauty of the Catholic Church, which has now gotten some 21,000 views on it. Um, and it has been played all over. And it was intended to really show through imagery, through music, through words, the beauty of the Catholic Church, and in many ways communicate the essence of what that pastoral letter was, the the church's mystery, the church's communion, and the church's sacrament, and really create that sort of experience with the church in a way that just speaks to your heart. Um, So that's one aspect, one tiny aspect of communications, but it's really thinking through what are the ways that we're going to reach our our church, the people maybe that are in the church that are active, but also the people that maybe could be away from the church. Um, How do we draw them in um, in different ways, in different communication methods? One of the reasons I, I think it's important, I think it's fascinating actually to have you on as a guest is because we're so, I'm so all about doctrine and I love theology and the content and the deposit of the faith. Um, but you don't own the truth like Gnostic truth, right? It's not like a secret little club. And if you know the password and you do it right, then you get to get in. And if you don't do it right, you can't be in my club. I mean, it's the, it's the mission of Jesus Christ that we take the gospel to every corner, to every person. And that means it's incumbent upon people like me to frankly hire people like you, um, because I'm 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 a good communicator, Margie, with people who um, are kind of when I'm preaching to the choir. Do you know what that means? Mm-hmm. Um, when they when they agree with me and we're on the same page and we all speak the same language, I'm your girl. But putting it away, like you say, people have not fallen away from the church. That is real work. Um, and, and it kind of brings me to what you do in your new your new apostolate, um, because this really all started way before the synod. It started with a deep and ongoing conversion journey, right, of, of yourself. That's that's right. You know, and since you, since you brought up the, the, the apostolate and this, this journey, one of the things I feel about five years ago, I really felt God impressing upon my heart. I worked 18 years in the corporate world. Uh, I mean, corporate, corporate secular. Cor- corporate secular. It was a wonderful experience, and I really believe that's where God wanted me at that time. Um, He gave me gifts. He gave me talents to use in PR and marketing. But about five years ago, I felt a really strong calling to leave that corporate world and to use those gifts for the church. And I started a company named Gem Communications, and that's been a journey over the last five years or so, really getting started. And being an independent practitioner is basically an independent consultant, having more time with my children and such. But I, I feel like it's an evolution. I've started to connect with other communications consultants that are also Catholic, uh, Aaron Dolan, uh, uh, another colleague, Paula West of mine, and we, all three of us women are Catholic who feel very passionately about the faith right now and feel very passionately about the mission to bring the, the, the message of Jesus Christ to more people. And we feel called to use our communication skills. So we've, we've um, started this new company called VIA, where we're bringing... No, wait, what does VIA mean? VIA means the way. I In love Latin, it! And it's really helping people like Lydia Lococo yep. or other archdioceses or Catholic schools or institutions that have the, the mission of, of Christ. And how do we help them bring their word out? How do we, through marketing, through public relations, through communication, through direct mail, whatever the case may be, how do we help them synthesize their message in a way that is more lame in terms or in a way that's going to help fill the pews or fill the classrooms or increase enrollment, whatever it may be, we really feel called to help the Catholic Church in this way. The Synod was a great example of how do we help the church with this mission of um, renewal igniting the faith well i'll give you i'll give my my listeners an example because it seems very simple um i wanted to have one of the first things that i wanted to do when i came was to have it was the 40th anniversary of humana vitae which was a singular document it was a loaded document i wanted to make it uh, i wanted to put a positive face on the 40th anniversary but i wanted to have a mass that recognized it and it was then um then archbishop dolan um was my boss and um, I thought, well, that's easy. I'll, I'll just, you know, make a flyer, put it on the website, blah, blah, blah. Well, I hired, I have gone through seven 
graphic designers in my life as in seven years at the Archdiocese trying to, con- you know, because we do a lot of contracting outside because we don't have a large staff here. And um, I-, I know this comes as a as a newsflash to everybody, but graphic designers don't necessarily know what, let's say, natural family planning is. They don't, they're not necessarily people of faith. And you're trying to non-verbally communicate something. So to work with secular people, I was banging my head against the wall and they just didn't get it. So um, I think we have to learn to communicate in ways that people can hear us, that millennials can hear us, that people falling away from the church can hear us. I think it is important for lay people to remain lay and to stay in the secular world like you are and work, but set your faith on fire and leaven the dough and let your light shine. So we don't want you working at the archdiocese and we don't want you working at the seminary and we don't want you, you, we want you secular, but all of all my listeners do a lot of great things. And when they need a flyer or they need a communication plan, they need to be able to go to believers that's out right. in the world, yeah. but with top-notch secular skills. Yeah, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about the three three people that um, are coming together: Aaron and Paula and myself. We've all worked in the secular world. We've all have many years under our belt. But what's beautiful is, and I, I kind of, I, I, I said this to a couple people where, for many years, my trade, my trade, the, my knowledge of marketing, my knowledge of writing a press release or writing, you know, creating or producing a video or my knowledge of social media, that was always really exciting for me. But right now, I feel like the content is really exciting within the church. Right. So it's blending a trade with the content. And really bringing in that experience that we have had in the, in the as you said, the real world, the corporate world, and bringing that for the benefit and the good of the church. Because I think we will the, we will play our tiny little part in building the kingdom and using those gifts to to help people like you and others. Well, we're a, we're a body of many members. And I'm trying to think of, if you're listening to this show and you say, that is exactly what I want to do. What you need to look at is what charisms and gifts has the Lord given to only you? And everybody's got one. I have a mouth, but everybody else is talented. Um, but I mean, f- seriously, let, let's say a physician. I mean, to be a pro-life OBGYN nowadays is literally um, a sign of contradiction in the world. Or you could be a dental hygienist. I mean, it's anything you do. How can I do it for the praise and glory of God? In what way? And how is it going to work for the growth of the body? You know, you're, you're hitting a very big button for me. I, I, it's such a passion for me. One of the things that I've done is at the parish level, a lot of evangelization work. And um, just to give you a, one sense of what we're working on at St. Anne is we've started a women's ministry, the Grace Group. And this grace group started off with seven women coming together as friends, which then grew to 13 women, then grew to 17 women, then to almost 30. And we said, okay, we need to forget about this grassroots thing and really create a women's group, a women's ministry for the parish. And the whole premise has been, how do we um, ignite the gifts of the women in this parish? And grace group stands for um, growing in relationship among Christ every day and Already we are seeing the gifts of this, the fruits of these women coming to this grace group. We have one woman who produced a, her first album using her music ministry. Anna Nuzo, she has a first album out. She is just beautifully singing the praises to our Lord and using those gifts. We have another woman who really feels called to be on the speaking circuit, speaking to families with disabilities. Oh, yes. And she, her message is seek the face of Christ in these disabled children and what you can do to help people. She came out of the grace group. We have another woman who is just our prayer warrior at our meetings, and she will pray with and over and for, and she's a beautiful intercessory uh, prayer woman. And and so she's actually, um, we're seeing the manifestation of her gifts as well. So all these different things, uh, th- that is evangelization. It starts with friendship. I'll use a layman term. Well, women, with, are, women are relational. So relational. we, right? We yeah. know it starts in a community with other people, yep. right? I mean, absolutely. Um, I want to, um, as you're zipping through this, I want to tell people how to get Anna's CD because it is really, really nice. Absolutely. You can go to Anna Nuzo. Dot com. Spell Nuzo. A N N A 
N U Z Z O dot com. If you want some good praise and worship music, I visited Pleasant Prairie, St. Anne's, Father Bob Wayner, my just you are so blessed out there. And um, this beautiful group of women and then and then the music ministry they have. Unbelievable. So I want to tell people how to do that. And then I want to very slowly. Let's say I have a little crummy group. And it's just getting started. Hey, you know what? Don't if they're laughing in the studio. You know what? I've run the little crummy groups. It's not exciting and 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 jazzy. And I wanna we really need to move to the next level, but we're not some big client like that you deal with. We're just but we have a little bit of money. You take little little clients, don't you? You take little Absolutely. bread and butter people like me who want my little maybe I have a grace group and we need to be a little we'd love to brand it a little bit and give it a look or you could. They could certainly contact you, you and hire bet. you, right? You, absolutely. So and if, this is what what I want to do is help parishes and help people, enable them, give them the tools to create these sorts of experiences because people can do it on their own. It, and with a little help, with maybe a workshop or maybe some guidance, we can help you. So on NazarethProject.com, there will be a link or some kind of information. Remember, it's the NazarethProject.com, the NazarethProject.com. There will be a link to VIA, which is a brand new initiative from some wonderful women. They, this is their living. This is not, this is what they do in the world to give praise to the Lord, but to use their gifts. And they, I'm sure they work for secular clients, but their real goal is to be at the, you know, at the help and um, discretion of large, of Catholic institutions, Catholic groups, parishes, schools, um, anybody who is trying to renew this archdiocese, we're so excited. I want to end with, um, we had uh, some key initiatives that came out of evangelization. And I think that's how you know the Holy Spirit is working because, you know, I'm looking at them, leadership training, Catholic identity, faith formation. Does this sound familiar of what we've been talking about? Catholic technology, right? Media director. We want to hire that eventually in the archdiocese. The Holy Spirit through this whole synod and going to lay on the hands and the heart of the archbishop that we have to learn these new ways of communicating um, so that we can get the good news out to the people. And so we look for um, all these 20 months of work, all this synod is going to culminate on September 14th, which is the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross with the release of the synodal declaration and we have a great dynamic communication staff at our own archdiocese, and that's what they do is when the archbishop, they just work for him. They have one client, and they're going to put it out for you. And so you go to that archmail.org and stay on that page and look for it. I think it's going to come out first online um, in a, a in an electronic form, and then you will eventually probably be, you'll see um, hard copy being disseminated throughout the archdiocese. But our communications group is waiting, our staff is waiting for the archbishop to release it to them, and this ties in just beautifully with this with this whole show of how to do evangelization and how to make it um, how to discern in your heart how God is calling you with what gifts He's calling you and how you're going to help be a little member of this big, big body of Jesus Christ. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. You know, and we love the word via, because even with evangelization, sometimes people get so worried about the word evangelization that that might scare people off. It's really just helping people find their way. It's helping them find their way home, whether it's to Christ, whether it's using their gifts, but finding their way. Who does not want to find their way in life? And and the way. The way. And the the way. way. Exactly. Margie, it's been so great to have you. I love you. I, I love, love you. You, too, you know, Lydia. I, love you. I know people are kind of sick because I, of course, of, of hearing me say that because, of course, I have all my favorites on my show. But uh, it's a big archdiocese, and there's some amazing people out there. We are grateful to Margie. And again, go to thenazarethproject.com. Right now, we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, it will be time for our mailbag. In today's car buying marketplace, the difference is the people inside the dealership. Uptown Motors sets the bar in customer service. Here's Uptown Motors third-generation operator, John Pentler. John, tell us about Uptown. 
We're a firm believer that business and customers can get along and do things in a mutual way here. I mean, what's good for our customers is good for our dealership. And what we really thrive on is having people come back time and time again. And the only way to make that happen is to do business in a way that it's beneficial for both sides. You know, the deal has to be right. The car has to be right. And you know what? In some cases, you come to a dealership and you have the fear that you're going to be talked into too much car, things that you don't need. And, you know, really what we look at is finding a mutual beneficial way to move forward on a car deal. Buy a new or used car from Uptown and they'll donate $200 to the parish of your choice. This is not a gimmick. It's who they are. Stop in and see what customer service is all about. Uptown Motors, Catholic owned, Catholic proud. RelevantRadio.com, keyword Uptown. We are back with the Nazareth Project on Relevant Radio and your host, Lydia Lococo. This is your part of the show because I call it the mailbag, but it's everything people send in to me. It's questions and please promote this and you know you get the email full of stuff and it's for you i want to dive in for you because you have to have a voice out in that archdiocese to promote the stuff you're working on all the events in your parishes so we've got a lot of events i'm going to get right to them uh, i know i've said this to you probably last week i'm going to say it again i want you to go to john paul the number two center.org and find those catholic id video blogs it's a 60 second message from Rich Harder. He's the director of evangelization for the Archdiocese. Puts a lot of time working to these, and I like them because that you can pop them out there and send them and share them on Facebook. So please um, check our Catholic ID video blogs. Also, I want to remind you about the Jubilee Mass. We're getting closer. It's October 4th, 10 a.m. Uh, Archbishop Lestecki will be the presider. It's for couples married 25 years or 50 years or 50 years plus, and it's a silver and, and golden Jubilee Mass. Uh, it's a $40 registration, but it's a boutonniere and a cassage, a picture of the Archbishop, a reception afterwards. It really is a special day. And what I find interesting is um, every every diocese in the nation, almost um, the larger ones especially, have a Jubilee Mass. Really nice. And we've been, ours we've been doing for, um, I know, I know well over 80 years. So it's a, it's a long tradition in the church. Go to johnpaul2center.org. Um, some save the dates, an upcoming event, Rosary, Evangelization, Apostolates, Hearts United, October 5th through 7th, Christ King Parish, three nights of prayer, three nights of inspiring talks, three nights of opportunities for confession, 7 to 8.30 each night. Go to heartsunited2014.org. Save the date on November 1st, Women of Christ. I'm going to be there, and you know who I think is going to be there probably? The new director of the Nazareth Project is going to be standing next to me, I think. So come meet whoever that is. A mystery person will put a bag on their head and we'll, maybe we'll have some dramatic pull off. I don't know. You don't know what will happen at Women of Christ because it's such a fun day. November 1st, Washington County Pavilion. Register at womenofchrist.net. Lastly, November 8th, arisemissions.org. Arisemissions.org. Register for Encounter Young Adult Conference. It's at the Cousin Center. It's one of only two Steubenville Young Adult Conferences in the nation. That's it for our mailbag. Now, 30 seconds, take a minute, breathe in, what really matters? How's the Lord calling you? How would you answer the question, who are you? Who are you? It takes a lot of confidence to be yourself in a world which tries to make us like everyone else. Most people say, oh, just be yourself. But it's advice that is easier given than received. Knowing ourselves, our identity, and our purpose in life is the first step toward discovering our true vocations. Thanks for joining us today on the Nazareth Project, Faith, Marriage, and Family Talk for the Everyday Catholic. Stay in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, and on our website, thenazarethproject.com. Remember to call me and leave me a message, anything you want to promote, anything you want to highlight, events, talks. If you have a question, uh, the number is 414 414- 758-2241. No one's going to answer. No one's going to scare you. It's just going to be taped. Leave your name and parish if you want to if you have a question, or you can be anonymous. Today's show and our past shows are available online at thenazarethproject.com. Coming up next week, I want you to meet someone you probably haven't met this person. He's new to town. His name is Mr. Andrew Stith. He is the president of the new Crystal Ray High School. It's a Jesuit co-ed high school here in Milwaukee. It's going to be open for business in a year, but their staff is already working, taking over the St. Florian School. 
if you know where that is, and working on renovations and moving in and hiring people so that they're ready to take in students for the next fall calendar year 2015. I want you to meet him. Great guy. Thanks for chatting this morning. I'm Lydia Lococo. We'll see you next Friday on The Nazareth Project. God bless your day. You've been listening to The Nazareth Project on Relevant Radio. Tune in next Friday morning at 9 for more faith, marriage, and family talk with Lydia. And for more information about today's guests and topics, visit thenazarethproject.com.